Hello, I'm Harold Minkowitz. This is the, the APS meeting in Austin, and I'm presenting our poster looking at the combined analysis of two, of two phase, two, phase two studies for the ARX01 for fentanyl nanotab PCA system for the management of moderate to severe post op pain. Um, basically, what we did was we combined data from uh, these three trials, which was abdominal, orthopedic, and the actual device study, looking at our safety data with this particular product, which is the sublingual sufentanil nano tablet. Um, it's a, the studies were with, with um, 5, 10, or 15 milligram tablets versus placebo in a dose ranging study, trying to find the optimal dose in these patients. The rationale behind the study was trying to find a safer and more efficacious and easy way for patients to control their pain postoperatively based on the multiple problems which we highlighted with IV PCA. The biggest problem being uh, PCA pump programming areas, analgesic gaps, decreased mobility of the patients because of the requirement of being tethered to the IV line, and certainly with longer term patients, there's always the concern of metabolite buildup and um, confusion and problems with, with elderly and renally impaired patients. The actual device which this replaces this replace the PCA pump is actually pre-programmed. So the, the hope is that there will be less programming errors once using the pre-programmed device. So we have the device which is pre-programmed and the drug itself is the sufentanil nano tablet which is placed by the patient sublingually and it forms a hydro patch with the actual mucosa, the tablet being applied to the mucosa resulting in a depot form of the drug uh, mucosity. And this will result in very nice uh, absorption and, and kinetics of the drug as there's no oral absorption, no first pass metabolism and a very consistent dosing with the different dose levels. Having said that, we looked at the uh, um, studies, the three different studies, and we found for the most part the most efficacious dose was the 15 milligrams. However, the 10 milligram was found to be effective in certain populations, but for the most part the 15 milligram dose was the most efficacious throughout the studies. Looking at the uh, pain intensity difference over here, you can see quite clearly the 15 milligrams being the most uh, efficacious and the placebo obviously showing a placebo effect with no real pain intensity difference. And when we sum that over time between the 10 and the 15, you can see the consistent effect of, of the 12 hours of the study of the drug. So what we found when we combined all three studies was that there was the, the device, when we had the device study, there's no device errors in the, in the patients. The patients were all um, mapped to check where the device, where the, we had a, 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 a grading system to see where the actual nanotablet was placed sublingually and where the grading system the, the actually were placed correctly by the patients. Um, at the, uh, they had very high patient satisfaction scores across the board and the, the patients found over here in, in the, the um, device study, the patients found that they actually could handle this, the system easily because the concern is a whole new system, can the patients use the system easily and across the board it was found that they could use it very easily. This a table over here shows the dropout rates due to lack of efficacy, and you can see the knee replacement study, the 5 was a very high dropout, this, this was an inadequate dose, 10 milligrams, with a 15 milligram dose, 25 uh, Drop, percent dropout versus a 67% dropout in the placebo. Looking at the abdominal, you can see a low dropout rate in the 15 compared to the placebo 70, but there was still efficacy at the 10, 10 micrograms.
gram range. In the, in the device study, you can see that only a 7% uh, fallout rate. The reason for that, we think, was the patients knew there was an active compound, and some of these patients were thinking that it's a very painful procedure. Maybe the PCA morphine would, would help them more. Uh, the complete, as you can see over here, um, intervals between dosing, you can see a nice interval of dosing between the, the, the doses, pretty uh, consistently across the groups, it had a long duration of action. The AEs, as you can expect, would be those narcotic adverse events of noise and vomiting, but there's no real difference between um, the... Uh, AEs between the treatment group and study, except there was pruritus from in the 50 microgram group with placebo, but between the 10 and the 15, there's no real difference between uh, AEs. Now, what we did was we went to the literature and did a uh, review, and did a, this publication over here looked at the um, the review of. I think I forget how many patients were reviewed over 10 years looking at serious adverse events and bad outcomes with conventional PCA. And what we found was there was an average of 56% of somnolence, 11% desaturation, and 50% uh, spiritual depression. And you can see in our data over here, there was a very low incidence of desaturation, pruritus mentioned over there, the spiritual depression, almost nothing, very similar to placebo, and somnolence, extremely low. So overall, you can see our conclusions, the tablet was, the 15 micrograms tablet was effective and safe, and well tolerated for treatment of moderate to severe personal pain. The data combined in both double-blind studies showed a significant difference in dropout rates due to inadequate analgesia and placebo, with an average of 16% for the 15 microgram groups and 33% for the 10 microgram groups. The adverse events didn't differ between the 10 and 15 microgram dosing groups. And the, from what we took from all these data was well, that this suggests that a fifth, single 15 microgram fentanyl nanotablet dosage strength with a fixed 20 minute lockout period is appropriate for use in a wide variety of post op settings. And this was our summary of our data.